Hi, welcome to the Personal History Hub. This medicine video is all about the Great Plague in 1665. So what did people think caused the plague in 1665? Well, most explanations for what caused the plague at the time had not really changed since the Black Death in 1348. So they still included the movements of the planets, bad air or miasma. So that is why the plague doctor, as seen in the picture, has the long beak on the mask to fill it with herbs to stop the bad air or the miasma. Rotting waste and food, as shown in this picture of a London street, or the four humours being out of balance. So this image here shows a mortality bill for 1665, and these bills listed the numbers of dead in each parish and the causes of the death. Uh, these bills showed that the highest numbers of plague deaths were in the poorest, dirtiest, most overcrowded parishes, and so provided evidence that the plague was linked to dirt and bad air. So how did people try to treat it? Treatments of the plague were very similar to those used against the Black Death. People prayed for the sick, gave them magical or religious charms to wear, or cut open the buboes to let the pus out. Traders sold great medicines, which they claimed had saved vast numbers of lives. One such medicine, theriac or London treacle, contained wine, herbs, spices, honey and opium. Desperation also drove people to dry remedies such as this. Wrap in woolen cloths, make the sick person sweat, which if you do, keep warm until the sores begin to rise. Then apply to the sores live pigeons cut in half or else a plaster made of yolk, an egg, honey, herb of grace and wheat flour. Physicians may have tried bleeding and purging if the sick live long enough, but most physicians left London for the countryside. Dr George Thompson stayed and carried out an autopsy on a plague victim, hoping to learn more about the disease. Thompson caught the plague but survived despite his own remedy of putting a dead toad on his chest when he felt the first symptoms. So how do people actually try to prevent the plague hitting them in the first place? So methods of avoiding the plague were obviously strongly linked to ideas about its causes. People believed it was vital to keep the air sweet to ward off the bad air that brought plague. Bunches of strong smelling herbs such as lavender or sage were hung in doorways and windows to stop bad air coming into the house. People also held bundles of herbs under their noses as they walked through the streets or drank plague water made from herbs mixed with wine, which was thought to give protection against plague. Many people simply stayed at home to avoid contact with others. When they had to buy food, coins were soaked in vinegar to avoid passing on the plague. Some used even more powerful smells to fight off the plague carrying miasma. Many people chewed tobacco, hoping the strength of its smell would give them immunity from plague. A schoolboy at Eton College said that he was flogged in 1665 for not smoking often enough. And the same theory explained the recommendation from Dr Francis Glisson, a professor at Cambridge University, to keep in your room a piece of dried manure from someone who had died of the plague. So the methods used to try to stop plague spreading were very similar to the yo's used in the 1300s. The king and his government ordered days of public prayer and fasting, which means not eating, so that people could publicly confess their sins and beg God to be merciful. The Mayor of London published detailed orders which showed that a great deal of thought and effort went into trying to prevent plague from spreading. However, the orders were not always easy to enforce. So these were the orders that were published by the Mayor of London. So examiners were appointed in every parish to identify those who caught plague. Families were expected to report plague symptoms by two hours. Victims and their families were shut up in their homes, watching the guard to stop anyone going in or out. Some victims were taken to specially built pest houses away from the crowded parts of the city. Bodies were examined by women searchers to check that plague was the cause. Their findings were confirmed by surgeons. Bedding had to be hung in the smoke of fires before being used again. Barrels of tar and bonfires were lit in streets to cleanse the air of poisons. Rotten food was banned from sale to reduce bad air. Householders were ordered to sweep the street outside their doors every day and wash down the area twice a day to prevent dirt building up. Pigs, dogs, cats and other animals were banned inside the city. Stray animals were killed by newly appointed dog killers. 40,000 dogs and 200,000 cats were killed. Plays, bear baitings and games were banned to prevent the assembly of large crowds which might spread the plague. Carts collected dead bodies at night and took them 
um, for burial in mass graves at least six feet deep. So why were the orders hard to enforce? The first reason is that Parliament refused to turn the orders into laws because members of the House of Lords refused to be shut in their houses. Number two is that people simply ignored the rules, so plague symptoms were not reported. Over 20 watchmen were murdered by people escaping from houses that had been shut up. Three is the King and his council left London themselves. They discussed what to do about the plague three times in seven months, and two of those discussions were just about the King's safety. Nine men were put in charge of dealing with plague in London. Six of them left London as soon as they could. Not enough men could be found to work as watchmen. Some watchmen and women searchers took the chance to steal from the sick instead. And beggars and other homeless people caught plague but still stayed in the streets begging for help. So why did the plague come to an end in London? A combination of cold weather, the disease reaching the end of its natural course, and the Great Fire of London to put an end to the Great Plague. In 1666, London was destroyed by fire and was completely rebuilt. So narrow streets and wooden buildings, as seen on the picture in the left, were replaced by stone and brick buildings, as seen in the picture on the right, and wider, better paved streets. For a time, London was healthier. However, the city became more and more crowded again, and the benefit of rebuilding soon disappeared. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the Priestnell History Hub. And our next video will be about caring and healing the sick in the Renaissance period.